super excited to stamp with you today. I have a really fun card. Let me just show you the card real quick. I'm going to be making this and showing you a couple of tips for making this card with the Stamparatus. So I am just going to let everybody get on. This is a uh, Facebook Live. It's 2 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, March 15th. So if that's the time that you're watching, then you're watching live. And if you're watching it later, then um, I will, uh, you can catch it later and comment, but I won't be seeing your comments live if you're watching later. So I'm just pulling it up over here on my uh, iPad so that I can make sure that everything is going smoothly. I have a swap card that I'm going to be making with you. I'm going to tilt the camera down in a minute and show you some tips for the way I was working on these swaps with the Stamparatus. So um, while you are jumping on, let me just uh, refresh you. Some of you may not know what a swap is or what that means. So when Stampin' Up! demonstrators go to a demonstrator event like on stage used to be called a uh, convention or a regional convention or a regional seminar now it's called on stage they usually bring cards and will bring like for instance I've got uh, don't want to drop this pile I've got this many made so far of this card I am shooting for a hundred so we bring a whole bunch of cards of one design and then we walk around and we swap with each other. So we will walk around and say, hey, are you swapping? And then you get all these ideas back and it's great. So it's a wonderful way to come home with a lot of different stamped ideas. So I am making this one and I'm using the Stamparatus to make it go quicker because when you're making several, you know, dozens or a hundred or a couple hundred or whatever, then it's anything you can do to make it easier is wonderful. So I'm going to show you those tips on that. And then I also want to show you a beautiful card that I just received in the mail from another demonstrator. And I think it'll be easier to show you when I tilt the camera down. So um, I'll do that when I tilt the camera. And I also wanted to remind you about celebration. So, oh, Rose is asking which on stage am I going to? I am going to the Las Vegas one. So I will be at that one and that will be fun. So if you're going to an on stage, why don't you comment? I'd love to go through and read your comments and see where you're going if you are a demonstrator and you're going to on stage. Oh, yes. And so the Stamparatus, um, let me just chat about that for just a moment. So the we just got word today that for everyone who reserved their Stamparatus in December, they will all be ready to finalize and ship in March. Is that amazing or what? I think that is so great. So um, if you ha have a Stamparatus on re reserve, if you reserved it, if you made a reservation, then you will be able to log in on Tuesday, March 20th. That's just next week, it's less than a week away, and you will be able to finalize your order. And I just want to say, because a lot of people missed this last time, the people that reserved in November, you can add something to your order. So now here in the U.S., and I'm not sure about the other markets, but in the U.S., the Stamparatus is $49. But with a $50 order, you get a free celebration item. So I had a lot of people that just ordered the $49 Stamparatus. And I felt so bad. I thought, gosh, if they just would have added some dimensionals or twine or ribbon or a snail refill or, or I mean, you can add whatever you want. You could add hundreds of dollars if you wanted to, but even if you just would have added a little something, you would have received a free celebration gift. So don't forget about that next Tuesday when you are finalizing your Stamparatus order, if you reserved in December. Now you will get an email from Stampin' Up! with detailed step-by-step -step how to finalize that order, where to find the order, how to finalize it, etc. So don't worry about that. Um, I... I'm not going to go into details about that, but you will get an email from them. So speaking of celebration, that's what I was going to talk real quick about. Stampin' Up! did add, I believe it's 14 new items 
to the um, list of free gifts that you can get. They just did that a couple days ago. And I don't know if anybody else caught this, but there are now a total of 30 items on mm -hmm. the the uh, celebration list. And it's Stampin' Up's 30th anniversary. Did anybody else catch that? I think that's really cool. I don't know if they did that on purpose. But yeah, there were 16 things before. They added 14. So now we have 30 items to choose from. So if you are not familiar with Celebration, basically in the U.S., when you purchase $50 or more, you're earning a free item. And you can just go online to shop and look at those. If you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. If you have a demonstrator, please shop with them. But you can either go to pattystamps.com or mystamporder.com. And then that's how you would be shopping with me. And you will just place your order and then there all of those free items are listed there online. So it's super cool. I love this time of year. And it's a great time of year, by the way, to stock up on things like envelopes and snail refills. Um, dimensionals. Oh my gosh, I go through so many dimensionals in a week. So I'm always using those up and stock up on the ribbons. If there's any in colors that you want, you know, because some of them will be retiring. So there might be some of those that you want. So it's a great time to kind of look through your inventory. Like I needed thick whisper white cardstock. I needed the small note cards. So lots of things that you can stock up on to get the extra free gifts. So, okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I did see a question go by. Yes, demonstrators do get their discount on the Stamparatus, just like anything else. So it's not special in that way. You still do get your discount. Yay, that's always a good thing. So if you would like to be a demonstrator and you have not been working with someone, I'd love to have you join my Love to Stamp group. We have about 325 people in our group nationwide, all through the U.S., love to have you join us. So private message me and I would be happy to help you. Okay, so hello Martha and Jenny and everybody that's been going by. It's so good to have you with me. I'm excited. So let me just check my list. I think I, yep, covered all those little things first. I'm going to tilt the camera down and we're, I'm going to show you that beautiful card that I received. Hey Jason! And I am also going to demonstrate for you how I was making my swap card and the, the special little tips that were making it not, um, not so time consuming because, you know, 100 cards, that takes a little while. So I'm just going to cover up the camera as I tilt it so that you don't get all dizzy. So where's the camera? So I just wanted to show you this beautiful card. This is from demonstrator Jenny Hall. And... Look at how cool this is. It folds flat for the envelope and then it pops up and look, it's just all totally 3D. Like how beautiful, cool is this? And she just was congratulating me on my milestone for 1.5 million. How sweet is that? I just love this. So I'm sure there's a name for this kind of card. I don't know what this, what kind of card this is called. But I loved this. I thought this was so pretty, and I just wanted to share it with you and say thank you again, Jenny. So I don't know if Jenny will see this, but I love that. So pretty. Thank you, Jenny. This was the flyer I was talking about for, uh, yes, Michelle, I love Jenny's work as well. She is amazing. She's amazing. So this is the flyer that I was just talking about for celebration. So be sure that you pop over to pattystamps.com. And you check out all of the happenings for celebration. Oh, and I was working on these. I posted these yesterday, too. I was getting together some welcome packets and congratulations on your title advancement packets, um, goodies for downline. And those were with some of the stamps that I've ordered from my amazing niece, Holly. And her Etsy shop is Burns Nest designs. I think she is amazing. And I love that I can't write like this, even, you know, no matter how hard I try. So I love that I can use stamps and just make cute, pretty things like that. And I always do that one on the back of my cards. And so, yeah, those were just some of the things I was working on. This just looks a little bit crooked. I'm just going to try to straighten this up. 
Technology is just not my friend today. I think we're just going to go with the flow. I'm sorry. I hope that you can see everything okay. Just a little bit crazy today. So, um, hey, Linda. Linda says she's a little bit late. But you know what? Don't worry about it. Because I did a video a few minutes ago. And I totally messed up on the orientation. And it was upside down. So you're good. Now you're in the, the right place. And here we are. So... <laughs> So this is the card that I am making for my um, swap card for on stage, and I was um, explaining what swaps were in the other video, so you'll have to watch the other video if you missed that and you don't know what swaps are. But uh, anyway, I'm making about a hundred, and you can see that I'm using different patterns from the Petal Passion paper. Let me just show you in the catalog what that is because it's like only the best paper on earth so it's on page 23 of the occasions catalog and it's down here and it's all black and white you can color it if you want to um, or you can leave it black and white so in my case I'm leaving it black and white and then I'm also using the petal palette stamp set and the matching petals and more thinlet dies and kind of the reason I was talking about the celebration is check that out. You can get the dies as a free item for um, a $100 order. Now this is in the US. It's different in the other markets, but love. So if you get that free and then, or if, okay, let me rephrase that. If you purchase the stamp set and a couple other items, you could get the thinlets as your free item rather than paying the bundle price. So it's a fabulous deal. It's a great time to purchase this if you don't have it yet. And I've seen a lot of comments going by saying that this is like the best suite ever. Um, Yes, it is. I do agree. I love it. So I have a couple of tips that I wanted to share with you for how I was making these cards. So when I make a lot of cards, like a hundred cards, I have to kind of do assembly line and I need to do things as quick as I can. So the first thing I did was to die cut a hundred of the stitched shape ovals. I used the lemon lime twist and this stamp from that um, petal palette set and I stamped them all with lemon lime. So that was just the first step really quick and then I have all those in a pile ready to go. Then my next step was to work on the flower part. And here is where the Stamparatus tip comes in. So let's grab the Stamparatus and let me show you this amazing tip. All right. You may have seen this. I actually showed this using a heart. I did a video on YouTube where I die cut a heart and then we mounted the heart over here and then we were stamping lots of hearts really quickly. Okay, so it's the same idea, but it's using the flower image. So what you do is you stamp your, um, you, you mount your flower over here first. You ink it up, you stamp it on a, a completely blank piece of paper. So pretend the flower is stamped here. You die cut that in the big shot. So now there's a hole in it but now your flower is in the right place to line up with the hole, okay? So then this is a red rubber stamp, so I don't need the black mat, and now I keep my template on here with my magnets. Then I can just die cut super fast a hundred of the flower shapes. So I have a hundred of these cut out, and then all you do is just lay that right into the hole in the template. And I'm using Memento Black, even though I don't have to because I am not using the blends, but I like it because it um, doesn't stain the rubber. So I inked up my uh, flower image with that Memento ink, and then I just flip it over, and I press and lift up, and voila, it's in the right spot. And if I, actually, I think I did get it pretty good, except for one tiny little spot. So that's the beauty of it. There we go. One little spot didn't come out. And then here's my other tip. I just take my paper piercer to lift it up. And there you go. It's perfectly die cut. 
So if I were to do this the regular way, which to me the regular way would be that I would take a half a sheet of cardstock and I would stamp like six of these on here. I would take it to the big shot. I would line up the die and I would die cut each one. That would take a long time because you're trying to line up the die perfectly around your stamped flower every time. That takes a while. So now I can do a hundred of these in like, I don't know, half an hour maybe? Really quickly. So that's one tip. Now let me show you what I was doing to color them. So actually I had, I was doing these six at a time. So you know what? This is really bothering me. I don't like dirty grid sheets. Hang on here. I just don't. It really bugs me. Okay. Yay. Nice and clean. So you just take a little tiny dab of adhesive, take a little bit of the sticky off, and then you just put that down so that it doesn't move. So I had six of them lined up and that's how I was coloring a whole bunch of them at once. Then I have my berry burst. And of course this can be any color. I just chose to do berry burst and lemon lime twist because they are awesome colors. And then I have my two daubers, mm -hmm. my sponge daubers. So kind of breaking a rule here. I never like to have a lot of ink pads open together because that scares me. I'm going to do the wrong thing. So I started by just very lightly, lightly, just, just a little bit of color, letting it fade out towards the outer edge of each flower. And then I inked it a little bit more and pressed a little bit harder right in the center so that it gave a little more dimension. And that's it. That is how easy it is to color these. And you've seen me do a lot of these flowers with, I've done them with Brusho, I've done them with watercolor pencils, I've done them with the Stampin' Blends. Um, uh, it seems like I did them with something else too. The blender pens and the aqua painters, whole bunch of different um, color mediums where you can get really detailed and really beautiful color. But again, for making a hundred of these, you need to be a little quicker. And how quick is that? So that's all I did. And then I grabbed my oval and I knew that I wanted to place it about here so that it kind of goes off the edge on, you know, off of the oval. I didn't want it totally within the oval. So now here's a tip <laughs> because I was making these over at Cindy's house the other day and it was really kind of funny because I put my adhesive on here and stuck it down and then every single one of them, when I picked them up, I had adhesive over here. <laughs> Oh, I had to take the adhesive eraser and erase all of that. So I'm going to be smart and put the adhesive on this piece. <laughs> I'm going to add it here. Maybe you had to be there, but I'm telling you, this is so much better. <laughs> so now those two pieces are together and they are ready to put on my card. The other thing I did, two other things, was I used these really cute glitter and clear epoxy dots. They might look the same when you take them out of the package, but one sheet actually has little glitter in it and one sheet is totally clear. Now I'm using both interchangeably on this project, but if you had a preference, you could always use one or the other. And I am putting little dots on here so that they kind of look like um, dew drops because I know a lot of mornings when I go out to my garden, there's dew on the roses, and it's so pretty when you go look at all those little dew drops. So it might be next to impossible to notice, but maybe you can see those. But it's very pretty in person. Just a nice little subtle way to give a little something extra. I don't know if you can see those. Maybe, maybe. Um, last tip on this is that 
I was going to use my Wink of Stella to color in the roses, but it was kind of just a little bit muddying that color where instead of having this nice dark part and then the lighter part, it was sort of like coloring it in because, you know, this is wet. And so what I decided instead was that I would just lightly dab a little bit of Wink of Stella on the leaves. So you still get that beautiful shimmer on the project, but I didn't, I wanted to keep that light and dark. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And again, this might be something that you didn't see very well, but on the camera, it might not be picking up, but it is really pretty in person. So then just to finish up this project, oh, just put my thumb right in that. Oh, hang on. Yep, it happens to all of us. All right, so to finish this up, I have my thick Whisper White card bases cut and scored. I do that all at once. And then, and let me give you the dimensions and I'll show you. So it was as if you were making the long skinny card that's 11 inches long, scored in the middle at five and a half, and these are four and a quarter wide. But I cut it off and I think it's eight and three quarters total. And there, this is no magic number, but the reason I did it was then you can cut your designer paper to three inches by four inches, which as you know, out of a 12 by 12 sheet gives zero waste. So you're using every single part of it. And that piece can layer right here. So on the finished card, you see how that's layering right there. Actually, I wasn't going to show you that one yet, but back to these, back to the Berry Burst ones. So then your three by four piece layers perfectly. So I hope that makes sense. I'm always about the math. So, you know, engineering background, I'm always about the math. So again, it was as if you were doing the 11 inch, but it's cut to eight and three quarters. It's still scored at five and a half. And that allows you to put the three by four inch piece of designer paper. Oh, I see hearts. Yay. And I'm sorry, I have to go back and look at the comments. I missed missed the comments, but um, that allows you just to put that on there like that. And then I did the ribbon. So I have the Berry Burst Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon. And at first, I'll admit it, the crinkles bothered me just, you know, a little bit, but um, I got used to them and now I really love this ribbon. What I, two things I really love about it is that it ties amazingly easy and when you mail it, it doesn't make a big lump where the knot is. And so usually you don't have to worry about the extra um, 21 cents in postage. So then for the adhesive, I did it from, so this is the, the bottom. So here's the bottom. So I did it on the top two thirds of the oval. And then I am letting that hang down. And then you don't have any adhesive back here. Like just ask Cindy how long I took erasing all that adhesive. What a doof. That's short for doofus, by the way. So there's that part, and then I used, oh dear, where'd my stamp go? It was right here. Does anybody else have as messy of a desk as I do? Holy cow, what happened to my birthday stamp? Ah, yes, there we go, okay. So I needed a long skinny greeting down here, and that is from the Beautiful Day set, right here, the Happy Birthday. Um, and don't be fooled. You always have to read. This says images shown at 80%. Sometimes I'm going through my stamp sets and I'll be like, oh, this is the perfect size. And I open up my box. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's not full size. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that you look at that when you're deciding what stamp you're using. Anyway, okay. So then just again, I use the Memento Black just because it's here and it's out and it's, um, it doesn't stain the stamps, and I love that, and I just 
stamped out at the bottom. And that's my card. So pretty easy, but I think it's got a little bit of wow. I really like it. I love how they turned out. What do you think? And I'm sorry, I missed a whole bunch of comments. I'm going to have to have to go back and look, but I was going to experiment in lots of different colors. And so I got out Calypso Coral and I was going to do this. I colored the white ribbon. Let me grab. Oh, it's it was packed away because I took it to Cindy's. But that's the white ribbon and I colored it with the Calypso Coral Stampin' Blends and just to kind of uh, blend in and match. So I was going to do that, but I really liked this better. I just thought this really popped. Let me show you side by side. Tell me what you think. If you were swapping, which one would you rather receive? I'm just curious. I'm just going to let the comments catch up and see what you think. I see hearts. Berry Burst. Athena says Berry Burst. Berry is bolder and better. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Berry Burst has the wow. Berry Burst. All right, we're tossing that one. We're doing Berry Burst. <laughs> I'm glad I only made one of the other one. <laughs> Okay. 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 Berry burst, berry burst, berry burst. Thank you. Thanks for making that decision with me. <laughs> so that's my card and those are my tips. And I hope you found those helpful. I have, I kind of make them in stages. So all of the cardstock is cut. All of the black and white paper is cut. These are ready to put on. So now I just will be sitting and assembling and tying ribbon and assembling and stamping the birthday. And that's how I that's how I do my swaps. I don't know if anybody else has like a better system, but um, that's how I do it. So um, let me just scroll. Oh, measurements again. Yes, I'm happy to share that. So let me just grab. Hang on. Okay, so you're starting with a full sheet, eight and a half by 11. And what I do is I score it first at five and a half, and then I cut it at eight and three quarters. So eight and three quarters, I cut it off. Then I cut it in half at four and a quarter. So now both pieces are already scored, which is handy dandy because then you don't have to score two pieces. So do you see how it's already got the score in it? So that that's it. So it's they're four and a quarter by eight and three quarters scored at five and a half. And what that allowed me to do was cut the designer paper at three by four. Oh, I might use those stripes. And then it's framed perfectly in there and there's no waste in your 12 by 12 paper. So Susan says, could it be eight and a half instead of eight and three quarters? Um, yes, but you're still only gonna get two from a sheet. If you cut it at eight and a half, you still only get two. So yes, you could, but um, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a strip left over no matter what. Then you would cut these smaller than three by four. Okay, um, let me scroll back and just see if there was any comments that I needed to address. And then if you have a question, go ahead and type. Oh, the name of the ribbon is um, Berry Burst Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon. And it's number 144191. I always feel like QVC or HSN or something when I'm doing that. It's kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, yeah, so you're liking the raindrops. Glad. And... Oh, Jennifer says, I can't come to her house if I don't like messy grid paper. Yeah, sorry. I've got to have clean grid paper. Oh, my word. I'm just a, a clean grid paper, like, fanatic. 
It's silly. I know it's silly. Okay. I didn't see other questions. So now let me just get caught back up here and no problem, Athena. No problem. I am happy to help. I am so glad you like the card. I am so glad. So, um, any questions or anything else about celebration or anything else that we were chatting about that, that I can answer for you while we're still together? Oh, I will be at the Las Vegas on stage, Athena. So that's coming up in April. Does the ribbon, yes, the ribbon goes around on the inside. I tied it all the way around the top flap. Good question. Um, oh, Brina is asking about the tailored tag punch. That was on a different card. I posted that to uh, Facebook this morning. Let me grab that punch and I'll show you that tip. So the tailored tag punch, this is something I had on, um, on Facebook and my blog today. Wow, you can even do it. Look at that. You can even do it with a wider piece. So I was just showing that you could make a flagged end with this punch. I love this tailored tag punch for that extra little um, benefit. Isn't that a great benefit? So, okay, anything else here? Um, hi, Lisa. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Linda. Hi, Gail. Awesome. Oh, you guys like that. Cool. Yes, you like that. Yay. <laughs> okay, anything else I can answer for anybody. Otherwise, I will let you go. I appreciate you so much joining me today. So fun to chat with everybody.